Hey, what's up, guys? First off, I wanted to thank everybody um, who watches my channel and uh, presses the like button or dislike button. That helps as well. I don't care. <laughs> um, it's just a hobby. I hit 1K. I didn't expect to. Um, so I thank all of you who subscribed and watch my videos. I really, really appreciate your support and very, very thankful. Uh, but we'll go into this really quick. Um, I really didn't expect to even hit anything. I did discuss this a little bit at my 500 mark in a previous video a while ago that I started this as a hobby. I have always loved food and cooking and just going out and um, started this about maybe two and a half years ago or so. Um, not knowing anything, I actually wanted to just show some friends and just try to start it up and it kind of grew more than I expected so it was kind of like a pleasant surprise but my main goal for the channel if anything besides just doing it as a hobby um, just to pass the time is show off some of the local businesses and support them um, they're very important to our community and a lot of them have been here for a while or even if you're new they're just trying to make an honest living and you know go through the everyday struggles of trying to uh, have a business in Hawaii, which is a very hard thing to do, especially in food. So um, also, I wanted to give tips to some visitors that visit Hawaii and just are curious about what to eat and maybe expose them to some things they're not used to. And, you know, all the food's pretty good and it might not be something you've ever heard of and maybe you can try it. And also some tips. Um, initially, I wanted to also do this as a travel channel too once in a while. I don't get to travel often like some YouTubers. Um, I have a regular job, but I do travel often, uh, at least once a year. But with Corona and COVID and all, um, that kind of stopped. But wherever I go, I try to give tips on, you know, my experiences, what might make it easy for people um, if they're planning the same vacation, etc. So that was my goal. And also to provide new places that you might have not even heard of, even if you're a local. So thank you again for everybody's support. And uh, we'll go into this video, which is Teruya's Ondagi. Um, what drew my attention to this uh, little hole in the wall was an article that was written. Um, I'm not sure which news source it was, but it was a local you know, media outlet that wrote about McKinley High School supporting Teruya during COVID times and that they weren't doing so well. And so McKinley um, bought a whole bunch of bentos for uh, their students and also raised money for the place to keep going. But surprisingly, I went there um, today and there was a pretty steady line going into the place. So they're pretty busy. So that's a great thing to see. Um, apparently, they used to be in Shirakia, the old Shirakia. So I'm not sure if I've eaten there before. Um, I may have, but my memory kind of goes. And plus all the food stalls in that food court, that old food court. Um, I didn't really pay attention to their names, but I know most of the food in that food court was pretty good. So they specialize in bentos and also their an andagi and uh, mochi, which was fried. So we're gonna try uh, two different bentos I bought. I'm probably not going to finish them all, but I just wanted to show you some different op options. They also have, um, I don't know if they're donbori or chirashi bowls, but they have bowls of food as well. So I got the shrimp roll, which is pretty much a, like a nori and rice sushi with a tempura inside, shrimp tempura. And when you get the bento, you get uh, some pieces of chicken and some looks like croquettes and various vegetables. So we'll dig in and try that first. And the second was a veggie bento, which is also popular with people. And we'll try those out. I'll just use my hands. It's a big roll with a little shrimp tail sticking out. Mmm, really good. It's pretty much like a rice ball, but the shrimp tempura inside has a nice sweet sauce. So it's not your typical tempura. Because it's in the rice, it's not crunchy anymore, but it's really tasty. I like uh, the seasoning that they put on there, that sweet soy glaze. 
biting into this right off the bat, and I've been mentioning this in a lot of um, my Okazuya um, videos, it just brings me back to the beach. I don't go to the beach that often, but it's something you would take to the beach and after swimming and you know when you're hungry this would hit the spot. This is so good I'm just demolishing it but I'm gonna save a little bit of it because it has rice. There's no other rice in here and try some other things so I can eat the rice with it. Definitely gonna have to do some cardio after this too much rice but um, we'll try the chicken. Looks like a chicken karaje or um, you know fried chicken. Japanese style. Pretty good. Got good flavor, even though it's fried. Because they're pre-made bentos, they're not crunchy anymore. But it doesn't bother me. It's kind of like getting a bento from 7-Eleven and you know, those aren't crunchy anymore, but it still tastes good. And then we'll dig into this croquette here. I'm not sure what kind it is, but it comes with this sauce. It's Japanese. It says kagomi on it. So quite authentic. Put that on and see how that tastes. Pretty good. It's like a potato croquette and I see some carrot in there. The sauce is like a katsu sauce, so definitely your regular chicken katsu sauce that has that tartness and the sweetness to it. I will say the croquette is pretty plain. It's a pretty plain potato taste, so you definitely need the sauce on it. And it's not crunchy anymore, same as the other things that should be crunchy. The katsu sauce definitely goes well with this uh, chicken as well, even though this is not chicken katsu. It tastes really good. We'll try out the sides. These are the veggies. I'm not sure what this white thing is, but we'll take a bite into it. Okay, that's a radish or a turnip, white turnip. Pretty good. Um, it's been braised or boiled, simmered in a traditional Japanese soy sauce, but tastes like dashi as well and a carrot. Almost tastes like nishime without the other stuff. Pretty good seasoning. I like it. Wish there was more though. And then we'll have this. It's got the little seaweed stuff on it, like kelp or something with some tofu and carrot and onion. Looks like kom kombuku too. This black stuff, the seaweed thing, whatever it is, reminds me of the samples you used to get at the old shurikia. Um, they would have like these toothpicks and you could try out all the different pickled Japanese veggies. I used to do that as a kid, try everything. And definitely has the same taste. Really nice, different textures for your palate with the meat and the rice and stuff. It definitely brings back memories of that shurikia stuff and good memories. Um, I don't know, that sh new Shurikia walkthrough with the restaurants, that's a cool concept, but it it's nothing like what Shurikia used to be, which was pretty much a Japanese department store, if you're not familiar. And my memories are just going in there and seeing all the different like electronics. Um, in the 80s, you've got the section with just music blaring with the big, big ass receivers and the big speakers for people's houses. Um, and then the Sanrio stuff, if that's your generation, um, that was a big thing when I was a kid. And just upstairs, all the different foods. It's so amazing, but it's gone and that's sad. But besides that, um, I do like these little cute cups, very bright colors, um, presentation's very nice. It's really cute. So I'm done with that. We'll try the veggie bento. I will say I thought I would be fuller but I usually fast and I haven't eaten since dinner and it's already past 12, so maybe I'm hungrier than I thought. So this is their veggie bento. Everything is vegetarian. Um, it looks very interesting. Got a whole bunch of stuff. I see um, 
looks like shredded radish, some green beans. You've got Goya or bitter metal in Okinawan style with the carrot and egg. Some pumpkin and everything. Looks delicious. We'll try uh, the most interesting to me. Hopefully it's not too bitter is the Goya. It's bitter melon. So let's take a bite out of this. Mm. Surprisingly not bitter at all. Very crunchy. They didn't cook it down too much. And I do like that crunch and I've never had bitter melon that way where it's crunchy. It's usually really simmered down. But it's interesting how there's not too much of a bitter taste to it. So they must have soaked it for a while. I kind of like it that style. Gives it a nice good texture. Uh, we'll dig into the kombucha, which is the Japanese pumpkin. It looks like it has a little bit of a batter on it. I'm not sure. Looks like it on the top and fried. You can eat the skin too. Nice and soft, sweet, just like the pumpkin should be. It's pretty plain. It's got just probably a little bit of salt on it, but it's good. It's very um, natural tasting. Have some rice. This is the purple, looks like mochi rice, and it's got some red beans in it. Very interesting, chewy texture. A little bit more mushy than regular rice, but I heard um, red rice is supposed to be really good for you, better than the white rice. Take a bit of this radish. Looks almost Korean style. It's got um, some chili flakes in there and sesame seed. Oh, I'm wrong. It's not radish. It's uh, gobo, which is the burdock root, which I talked about in the Fukuya episode. This is made very good. That's how I like it. it has that crunch. It's not overcooked and soggy. And when you do that, it retains that burdock root flavor. It has its own unique scent and fragrance. That's really good. I wish they gave more. Next, we'll try the fried green beans, stuff you can get at a Okazuya as well. These are my favorite vegetables to cook at home, but I usually cook it with butter and garlic. The um, Some people call it cow peas, they're not quite string beans, but they're the long kind that Filipinos use in cooking as well. I think they're the best string beans. <clears throat> and in that string bean, they also have a little bit of burdock root in there as well, which is a nice touch. Here they give you two eggplants. Looks like they're braised in a sauce, cooked down to the way I like eggplant mushy, which I don't like that texture in other veggies, but nice and soft. Again, um, very light seasoning, but it brings out the natural taste of each veggie. It's not bad at all. That Usually you want seasoning, but in this way it brings out each flavor of each vegetable, which is a nice touch. And then we'll go into this one, which is a fried patty of I'm not sure what. Mm. Almost tastes like those corned beef patties you get at the Okazuya, but no corned beef. It's probably just potato and starch. But it has a nice onion flavor to it, too. Very nice. It's got um, scallions and carrot in it. That's what's probably giving it its good flavor. And then they also include the same veg with that I talked about at Shirakia, the black seaweed type thing. It's also in there, but since we went over it, I won't go over it again. And then it looks like a piece of mochi, I'm not sure. Yep. We jumped into it too fast, but it's their, um, like a poi mochi that they make. Mm, this is really good. I'm sure you can hear it. It's very still crunchy. Crunchy, flaky outside. Chewy, 
soft inside of uh, the poi. This is a really nice sweet addition to end your meal with this veggie bento. I like that they included it in here. All right, we'll get into dessert and um, they put it in this cute little bag. They're obviously called Teruya's Ondagi. So I got one Ondagi and one of the poi mochis, which I just ate. So we'll put that on the side since I already ate one, but I didn't know it came with that bento, but it's nice to have that on the side for later as a snack. This is an Ondagi if you're not familiar with it. It's uh, pretty much an Okinawan dessert of a dough ball. Uh, they make a dough and they fry it in a big vat of oil. Sort of like molasadas is, but totally different. It's just the same way as how they cook it. This is more dense than a molasadas. It's not as um, fluffy and bready, but it's still good all the same. So we'll take a bite into this one and see what it's about. Nice and sweet. Good balance in the dough with the sugar. And the outside's still kind of crispy, considering that they're already pre-made. When you go to the front, the mochi and the andogi is in a pan already, and they just kind of get the tongs and put it in the package when you order how many ever, how many you order, excuse me. Um, so yeah, um, considering they're already, they're not freshly made, unfortunately, but still delicious. I didn't mean to say that. They're freshly made, I'm sure, that day, but they're not made to order. So they're not going to be like hot and crisp right off the bat, the kind that you would get at um, a bond dance or something like that. So my last tip is that if you want to try uh, a mochi, you get one free mochi if you check into Teruya's um, with Yelp. So um, it's free to get, the app's free, and you get free food. And this applies to many other restaurants, not all, but they usually have little, um, advertisements where you get one free thing. Um, but this is with, with a purchase of $5 or more, but most of their bentos are over $5 anyway. So, and they were held true to their promise and I got the free mochi. We'll go over the pros and cons. I like the presentation. The bentos are beautiful. Um, even the containers and all the little things that hold all the little sides. It's really pleasant to the eye. And sometimes you do eat with your eyes, you know, um, but besides that, it's not just beautiful. It's pretty tasty, and I like how they didn't really over-season. Um, usually I like seasoning, but this one, um, the cooking brings out the naturalness of each um, dish, of whether it be the vegetables or the meat. So it was really nice and light. So if you're looking for a light lunch, um, this is the way to go. Really good, and it's pretty healthy too. Um, and I do like my meats. Um, I do like veggies too, but usually I need to have some kind of meat. But I will say that the vegetable uh, bento, I could probably eat and be satisfied um, and not really miss the meat. It was pretty good. I liked all the different options as well. Um, the service was good. They're very um, kind. Oh, you get that feel of that old school mom and pop shop uh, Hawaii style. There are these old Japanese ladies and they're really, really nice. And I also called prior to going just because it's not too far, but it is out of the way for me. And I didn't want to go there for nothing because on their Yelp uh, page, it does say that you should call to pre-order. So I called and said, you know, do I have to pre-order before I drive there? And this is a tip from them. They said that if you order after 12, you should call in because they do... Um, end their day pretty early. They close at two. So um, if you're going 12 and after, um, they kind of start winding down, but they will make it for you if you call in to pre-order. But if you go at 10 and 10 to 12, um, he said there should be plenty enough bentos uh, in all shapes and forms. So whatever you want should be there. So you don't have to worry. And of course, I went there um, around 11.30 and yeah, they had, um, everything was there. They didn't sell out of anything. Um, there was a line to wait to get your bentos, but it went pretty quick. Um, like I said, everything's pre-made already, so you just tell them what you want and she takes it off the shelf and bags it. So if you're in a rush, it's pretty quick. The cons would be um, 
really minor. The parking sucks. If you're familiar with that area, it's on Pensacola Street uh, where Antipastos is and Vaughn's Chicken, that area, uh, right across the first Hawaiian bank. And that's all street parking. All the meters stalls were taken already. There is street parking across the street on the other side of the street, but you would have to cross. There was still plenty. And those ones weren't metered for some reason. The ones that were taken right next to the shop, they're all metered. Um, you can, but I won't suggest it, um, park in that uh, first Hawaiian Bank parking lot. I don't know if they tow. It's also shared, you know, with Walgreens and Petco. Um, there is a lot of parking on that side and you just would have to cross the street. Um, yeah, that's a con is the parking. And one little thing is maybe the portions if you're a big eater, it's very tiny. Um, you do get to sample a lot of different things, but it is a tiny portion. So if you're a big eater, you might want two bentos, or you might not think that's a real deal because you're already buying one. That's the only con I can think of, but I try to look at it at, in a positive light that it is a light lunch. And if you want something light and you're not too hungry and you want something healthy, it, it's a good meal to have. Um, I'm pretty satisfied, um, but I'm not totally full but I'm not starving either. So if you just wanna take it light for the day, um, this is the way to go, a good lunch. So yeah, that's Teruya's and Doggy. I really enjoyed the desserts too. Very nice and sweet and a good treat. And I like the portions too for the sweetness. Um, like it's a small little tiny ball. And if you're, you know, watching your calories or your sugar, it's nice to have a treat once in a while and the portions are small so you don't have to worry too much. It's not a big heavy dessert, so it's a nice treat to have. So definitely try it out if you've never had ondagi or poi mochi. This one's pretty winners as far as those uh, desserts go. They make them pretty well. So definitely check out Teruya's ondagi support a mom and pop business. Uh, the food was pretty good. I, I liked it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, so until next time, I'll see you on another food adventure. Please press the like button and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you again next week. Peace out.